Three, two, one. Yes, we're live. Hey everybody, just Phil Mr. here, just showing you a Dr. Webb website. Yes, this is me. I'm actually making this um, video on my Olympus Tough because my smartphone needs charging. So there you go. That's why. Anyway, um, I thought I'd show you a kind of geeky night in the middle of transitioning between computers whilst I'm learning some more super marketing techniques um, and helping a friend uh, debug their computer from a horrendous virus attack. Now, um, I'll just show you. This is the laptop that was evidently virused and luckily for us we were able to, for right now, um, get the information onto a external hard drive. So, you know, the useful stuff that was necessary to save from the machine is safely stored on the hard drive. Evidently, the external hard drive was connected to the machine, so very probably this hard drive contains viruses. So, I will show you the steps that we need to take. So, basically, this is running a scan right now, but I'll show you where we got the scan running from. In fact, it's running from a rewritable DVD. And why do we use a rewritable DVD? Well, I'll show you how it works. Basically, um, you can use any of these. There are a number of them online. I'm just going to show you the Dr. Webb one because um, I use it and it works and it's very effective. Um, there is a thing called the live disk. Do you see that? Live disk. I'm not sure if you're going to get a good focus on there. Anyway, so what that does, you download a thing called an uh, ISO file here. I'll show you what that comes down as. Here, look, there you go. Can you see that? It's an ISO file. Yeah. Um, dot ISO. So basically, it's a an image. It's an image file for creating a CD-ROM. And so you stick your CD in, like like you do, you know. Got CD, so you put your CD in, and you actually use um, you use a program to burn the ISO file to the hard drive. What does that mean? Well, it means basically it takes this file, which is 500 something meg, and um, here I'll show you the one I use. I use this thing called IMG Burn. I mean, you can get a, a number of things. There are different things that open these files. You can either open it, mount it as a uh, virtual CD or something. But here, I wanted to actually burn this. So um, you can just Google IMG burn and get yourself a free um, CD image burning software. Good plan. So we burn this image, which creates a bootable CD which we then put into the CD-ROM drive of the infected machine. Now one thing you must do on the infected machine is make sure that there is no network connection. Why do I do that? Because as you're trying to undo viruses, um, quite often they'll be smart and they'll be deleted, but before they delete they put a little link out to the internet and then bring back in the virus when you reboot the machine because they make a call from, you know, there are some really crazy, nasty little things that go on behind the scenes with viruses. So just unplug your internet cable if you've plugged in on a cable, like, you know, like the back here, see? If you're not on Wi-Fi, you're on a cable connection, just unplug the cable. But of course, I'm downloading through this machine, so I'm using, obviously, an internet connection on cable. And the laptop is disconnected, does not have a cable, and the um, network card is disactivated. So now we boot up um, this user interface, which is actually a version of Linux. Yes, I know you're all on Windows and you got Macs and, and everything, it's all going great, but when the going gets tough, Linux takes over. So now you know, it's a Linux operating system. It boots up, and in so doing, 
it allows you to run a scan on the machine without Windows running. So all the little scuzzy little viruses which are, you know, alive and kicking and brought into memory when you turn your Windows machine on are not because Windows isn't running. So you can actually make changes to the Windows files and the Windows file system from the interface under Linux as this is um, without Windows saying well you can't change that file because I'm using it which is what Windows will do. I'll give you an example just a quick rundown here I'm not going to make this too long but I'll just give you an idea if this puppy will open for me did I click it right? No, I probably didn't. There you go. So, just going to open the little file manager. So, you see, it's a, it's a little micro Linux operating system. It's not the full Linux operating system. It's just um, uh, um, an operating system in order to run an antivirus, which is really clever. So, as you'll see, um, Linux actually mounts the hard drives as a folder. And then it renames. These will not be the same num uh, same letter assignments as you would find on your Windows because we've added another drive. So let's say we can go, you see, you can see this is Windows because it's got Windows, here it's got the Windows file. So we could go into the Windows folder and we could actually make changes to the system. Um, if part of your antivirus discovery showed you that a particular file was corrupted or they changed it or it had been deleted or something which quite a lot of the time that's what these um, viruses will do they'll play with your files very often in this famous system32 folder <coughs> excuse me um, so once you've got the live CD running your machine you can actually make changes to this so you could uh, copy files a lot across from a um, good copy of Windows which you've got running somewhere or um, you could use the Windows CD for example um, to get the files back onto your machine that are corrupted or missing so that is a very handy thing to do um, I'm just doing actually a re-scan because this machine had 300 something suspect files and JavaScript things and stuff which this particular antivirus thought it ought to get rid of. So this is just a secondary rerun because it's always a good idea because um, uh, just to verify that there was nothing missed and that all the boxes were checked of all the files that you can actually scan. Um, running one scan on a machine isn't necessarily going to clean everything up and fix it because um, there are lots of different types of viruses so if you want to do a real good scan what I would suggest is you use three different antiviruses so here I'm using the Dr. Webb I've got myself a Kaspersky why not you know live CD um, it had a vast we can do, you know, TrendNet, Panda, whatever. There's like a gazillion antivirus things on the web that you can use. So um, those are the key points. Use a live CD. Don't use a USB key because if you put in a USB key from your machine to boot from a USB, you can do it. It is possible to boot from a USB key. But what that means is it's possible that your USB key will become infected and then when you bring it back to your machine you're just passing the virus from one to the other. Um, evidently, I mean um, up until this point I have not yet known of a virus that was capable of writing itself without you knowing to a CD-ROM. Maybe one day they'll make one, who knows. But for right now, so far, this has been a safe method of handling. So you write a, a bootable CD, and you put it into your machine, and there you go. That's how it works. So I um, hope that's given you an idea. This seems to be now more or less clear. I'm going to let it run, obviously, to the finish. Um, and then reboot back into Windows and see if it's good. And if it's not good, then what we'll do is reinstall Windows. Or, or Linux, probably, you know.
There's a lot less viruses on the Linux stuff. I think you'll probably find that. Or do both, because you know people have bought programs that run under Windows. They don't run under Linux, so you know um, you would want to have Windows available to run those programs. So you can set up your um, computer to run both, which is a very good idea. And in fact, I've got that on my laptop, so if I've ever got a problem with Windows and something won't delete or it says it's not usable, it's corrupt or something, I just boot up under Linux and handle the files that Windows won't let me touch because if Windows is running, it won't let you touch the system files, obviously. you know. Otherwise, you're kind of pulling the legs out from under it whilst it's trying to run, so it doesn't work. Um, so that's the thing. If you are interested in how to set that up on your machines, I will certainly do a video showing you how to install Linux alongside your Windows machine. There you go, I can do that for you. And um, hopefully that's given you a couple of ideas of how to, you know, handle machines that are infected. Don't use a USB. Do use a Windows Live bootable... Windows Live... I mean, a, a Windows bootable CD. I mean, obviously, if you're running another operating system, you would download the operating system antivirus that was suitable for your machine. So, hopefully that's all made sense. Um, rewind it if it didn't, and re-listen to the bits that you missed. Because it's, you know, maybe it's a bit whooshed over your head. But there you go. Um, keep yourself safe. If you get infected, get your machine cleaned up rapidly. Don't, like, wait six months. You know, if it's giving you some boggy virus alert from your antivirus, and sometimes antiviruses will say that they've discovered a virus and they don't stop them because they couldn't, but they knew it was a virus. I've seen that several times. So, um, you know, get it cleaned up, and you can clean it with several different antiviruses running off CDs um, so that you can be certain that you haven't got one. Because, um, as an example, a friend of mine said their machine was running like really doing silly things and couldn't get onto the internet and stuff was going wrong. But they had a paid for antivirus running on the machine. So I said, well, go to this website, do a scan, and find what your antivirus didn't find. You know? So there you go. What can I say? Um, all things are not equal. But what you can do is um, have two or three. You can get free downloads or trials or something. You can pay for an antivirus, but keep a backup uh, as another thing for disinfecting if you actually get infected by something that your current antivirus didn't handle. It's possible. There you go. Hopefully that's useful to you. Um, subscribe to the channel and uh, click the link below See if you want to find out what I'm doing online which is why you need to have a good functioning machine uh, all the time. Because if you're online and using the internet for your business, then you need your machines to not be uh, taken down by a silly virus. That would be silly, right? So there you go. Help a friend out with their antivirus. You could be the antivirus handler in your community because you'll have learned how to do it from me, which is great. So. Flourish and prosper. See you in the next video. Bye for now.